Hello and welcome to a new video. This time we on actually what matters most for our instructors and for students, uh, that is grades. Yep, uh, for better or worse, a grade is a currency we trade in. That's why designers and instructors build and deliver those courses and that's why students work long hours to get a good or at least a decent grade. So grades can be a very complicated matter actually. As the goal of LTI is interoperability, the grading API known in LTI Advantage as the Assignment and Grade Service has, at least in its first version, focused on the bare minimum, grades as points earned versus points possible. The Assignment and Grade Service main job is to allow a tool to post grades to the platform gradebook. It is important to understand it is not meant to be a full gradebook API. That is, you, you cannot build an alternate gradebook with that API. It focuses solely on a way to send grades from the tool to the platform. So from the tool perspective, the tool can access or create buckets. In those buckets, it can push scores updates. Those buckets, we call them line items. One tool can only see its own bucket. It never has a full gradebook view, only its own stuff. So let's look at those buckets. How are they created? Well, you have two ways to create line items in LTI Advantage. The first one is to let the platform do it automatically when you import credible content. The most common way this happens is through the deep linking flow. From the platform, you open the tool to pick or create some content to add to your course. The LTI resource link definition you returns contains a line item definition, indicating to the platform that this resource link is a resource that will return grade. As you see in this example, the tool indicates the maximum points for that activity. It also includes the resource ID that is an ident identifier for that line item from the tool perspective. So remember this resource ID, we'll come back to it very soon. So when the link is created, the platform will also create the line item for it. That means it will create a gradebook colon for it. Now the platform will know that this line item, this gradebook colon, is associated to that LTI resource link. We can say it's a coupled line item because it's coupled between the link and the gradebook colon. Usually a platform will tie the lifecycle of that line item to the resource link. If you remove the resource link, the platform may decide, for example, to remove the associated line item for it. But what really matters is that since that link, that resource link is explicitly bound to that line item, then when the activity is launched, when the user clicks on that resource link, the platform will include in the LTI message the, the line item URL for the associated line item. You'll find it into the uh, specific section of the LTI message in a specific claim called the assignment and grade service claim. And so why does it matter that this line item URL is in there? Well, that URL is what you will use to actually push scores back to the LMS. So this allows a very simple flow, uh, quite similar to the LTI 1.1 basic outcome. First, deep linking returns a graded LTI resource link definition, and uh, a link and the gradebook colon is created by the platform. Then the student uh, clicks on that link. The LTI message contains a URL where to post scores back to that for that activity once the student has completed it. So that simple flow, however, does not work if the user can access your content through more than one link. What I mean by that is that, for example, a case where you could have multiple ways to access a given activity. So let's imagine three links to a tool. One to the tool home page, where one can see all the tool activities, and two explicit deep links to specific activities. If the student clicks on the home page link, then that link in itself is not graded, so it does not contain any line item URL. If from there the student navigates to the actual assignment, then the tool would not know where to send the grade back. It doesn't know the line item URL. This is where another import, very important capability of the, assignment grade uh, of the assignment and grade service comes handy. It's the ability to query the platform for all your line items. So when the assignment and grade service is enabled for a tool, all LTI messages into the assignment and grade service claims will contain the line items URL which allows you to get a, a list of all yours and only your line item that exists in the current course context, in the current gradebook. So remember that resource ID we specified in the deep linking request? It will be included in that response. So in our example, executing a get on the line items URL will return the existing line items, and we will be able to use the resource ID to know which line items is the one for the activity, and so be able to post grades. Now, maybe you actually want a single link to the tool in your course, just a link to the, to the tool home page, but you still want to report grades for the embedded activities. This is where the second way to create line items becomes useful. You can create line items programmatically 
by posting a new line item definition to the line items URL. If the platform accepts your request, a new line item will be created and its URL will be returned to you. And now you can do, you can use it to post grades uh, to the NMS. So a few things about that line item that was created programmatically. First, it is usually not coupled to any link. We can call it a standalone line item. Then when you add it, you don't really have control on how and where it will appear in the gradebook. You just create that bucket. Usually the instructor will then go to the gradebook and place it, for example, in the right category, or even may even maybe change the maximum points to properly weight it, that activity against the others in the gradebook. So now that you have your buckets, you can actually post scores to it. So the URL to post scores is a line item URL with scores appended to the path. Now, that sending, not that sending scores is a write-only operation. Tools post score updates. So the only operation permitted on that URL is post. No get, no put, no delete, just post. So what is a score? A score is for a user. So it contains the user ID. So that is the same user ID that found in the LTI message token under the sub claim. Then the score contains both points earned versus points possible. Well, you may say, well, and the points possible already defined at the line item level, so why pass it again? Well, the idea here is that uh, we want the score to be totally self-defined and not depending on another entity to get the full picture. And this also allows us uh, to have different points possible per user. For example, a user may have been waived a question in a quiz. But still, usually, the platform will rescale the value uh, to the current score maximum uh, for the gradebook column. So what I mean by that is that maybe you can pass 4 out of 5 in, as a score value, but if the column has been set to be worth 10 points, then 8 would be shown in the gradebook. It would be rescale. So this brings us to the subject of grade representation. So by passing a ratio of points earned versus points possible, it does not limit the platform to only show points. One well, can sh actually show a percentage or even a, a letter base schemes or a pass fail underneath it's always a numeric score with some mapping rules. Now, the grade you send may not always be the grade actually showing up in the gradebook. For example, the instructor may have applied a correction or just plainly overridden it. Or there may be some other logics that may have been applied that affected the final score. So if you want to show in your tool the current grade as currently shown in the gradebook, then there is a call to get results back from the platform. So just append results instead of scores to the path and you will get the result as shown in the gradebook. Now results would show you the grade as currently the grade book, which can differ from the grade you send for many reasons, as we just mentioned. If you care to only get a single result grade, you can apply an additional filter to the um, as a query parameter, which is your user ID, in which case you only get a result for a single user. So results, uh, like line items, is actually a, a collection of, of data, and the platform can decide to page the result in multiple chunks. So for that, just be on the lookout for paging headers, which will indicate you if there is more data on another page that you will need to uh, follow through. Score payload must also co always contain a timestamp of when that score was produced. A platform will ignore scores with a timestamp that predates the latest score it has recorded from uh, it has recorded for that user and activity. So this offers some kind of security around out of order score posting. Finally, scores is not just about points earned. A score payload also indicates the status of the user regarding the graded activity. The status is actually split in two, the completion of the activity and the completion of the grading. So the activity progress status tells to the platform where the, stu where the student stands in regards to completion of that activity. Is the activity in progress or has it been submitted, for example? The grading progress tells where the grading stands is the points past the final grade or just a partial result? Is the grade waiting for instructor's action? Or is this just done in a background job and still processing? Since we do have statistics that imply grading has not yet happened, points are actually optional in the score payload, but statistics are not. For example, this score payload here indicates the student has, completely, has completed the activity and the instructor should go and grade it. Note that the platform may only record fully graded scores and ignore any other score updates. 
But if a platform is capable of recording statuses, then now you will see in your LMS gradebook some kind of flag or indicator telling the instructor an action is needed for that student that there has been a submission that needs grading. Well, at this stage, the instructor will probably have to find a way to navigate to the tool to locate that submission and do the grading. Wouldn't it be nice instead that you could just click directly on that flag, on that indicator, and the tool would open right away in the submission so you could review as your work as a student or review and carry on with the grading as an instructor? Well, that is the exact purpose of a companion specification to the assignment and grade services called Submission Review Message. A warning first, at the time of this recording, this specification is not yet public and it has not yet been implemented by most of the major learning platforms out there. Nonetheless, it's fully something that will become available soon, and I mention it because it so well complements the assignment and grades service by adding a UI uh, flow aspect to it. So with the submission review, you can click on the grade, the user is launched back in the tool. The LTI message for that launch is a new uh, type of LTI message called submission review, and it contains the line item and the user to grade for which this launch is made for. So this allows the tool to jump directly to that user submission. So I say submission, but that's really need to be understood very loosely. It really is up to the tool to decide what is re relevant to be shown. Maybe a video recording, some statistics, or whatever the tool captured about the user works on that activity. So how do you enable it? Well, this is done, this would be done at the line item level. So when you create your line item, you say this specific instance of a line item supports submission review launches, and you may even give a specific URL for it. So again, submission review is not out there in the world yet, but hopefully it will be coming soon to an LMS near you. Another element I have not mentioned yet is that you can pass dates uh, when you create a line item. So for example, you would indicate the submission date for an activity, what is a due date. As usual, this information may actually be overridden by the instructor in the LMS. Uh, so if you care to know what is the current due date for an activity, it may be handy, if your platform supports it, to have it added as an extra custom parameter in your LTI message definition. So this substitution parameter, at the time of launch, will be replaced by the actual uh, due date for the launching user if the platform supports it. If the platform does not support it, then you will just get this substitution parameter unsubstituted, in indicating you that you cannot get this information from the platform that it is not supported. One final note. The payload for line items, scores, and results that we've seen can all be extended. So a given LMS platform, uh, or even another LMS specification, may uh, further enrich those payload and will describe um, new optional uh, data that can be used. But it's very important to understand that you should be able to function with the ones from the specification and just use any, any extra data to enrich the experience. But you should never depend on anything that is outside of this specification. So that's it for grading, at least for now. So thanks for listening and happy grading.